Welcome to Overtime Hockey Talk. My name is Mark Paul. My co-host is Justin Baker, and we are super pumped for today's show because, you know, we we like to talk national national uh, coverage. We talk all the teams. Justin is a big Red Wings fan. I'm a big Toronto Maple Leafs fan, and it is today's episode when we finally conclude our preview of the entire league. We're a little late to the party, but that's okay. Uh, the Atlantic Division, we've got two teams left, and it is, shockingly enough, the Detroit Red Wings and the Toronto Maple Leafs. Justin, uh, here we are. We finally made it. Yeah, I've been uh, been looking forward to this one for quite some time. Yeah, so well, we're you know we're we're just going to jump right into it. So we're going to talk uh, Detroit Red Wings first because, um, as Justin put it, the expectations are lower, so uh, therefore you know they'll be a little bit easier to talk. I I would agree. Uh, you know the expectations just slightly lower for the Red Wings over the Leafs, so just a small smidgen of amount lower. A smidgen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, let's talk the signings that that happened. I know, I know, we're already, you know, we're we're already in our way into the into the regular season. So we we're you know we're we're kind of getting a, a picture of what some of these teams look like early on. It is still very early. I always go back to gosh, I remember this year when the Edmonton Oilers started off like I think it, I think they were un, they didn't lose in regulation in the first 10 games or something. They were first in their division and everyone had been talking about them missing the playoffs. Well, they went on to finish last in the league. Uh, So the first 10 games don't mean much uh, other than it's a great time to panic uh, or feel really great about yourself. And I think the good thing for Detroit is they're right in the middle of those two things. Like I think three, one and two, they're basically 500 not in terms of points percentage, but in terms of wins and losses, they're 500. And uh, I think this is about where we foresaw this team falling. And so we're really getting a good picture of, I think, how this team's going to look uh, through the rest of the season. And uh, it all starts with all the acquisitions that they made over the off season, uh, probably none bigger than Andrew Kopp coming in and, and filling out the top six with a legitimate center. Yeah. I mean, that's, that was really the big signing, right? I mean, uh, I think everybody kind of had an inkling that he was gonna, you know, sign with Detroit because he is Ann Arbor born and raised, right? He's a Michigan guy. So, um, you know, why would you not want to come home? Right. Just the same reason why, uh, you know, we all know that Austin Matthews is going to resign with Arizona, um, you know, once his contract's up. So, <laughs> um, but, Got I mean, me. listen, Got uh, me. yeah, <laughs> I mean, listen, right. Detroit clearly needed a number two center, you know, Pius Suter last year was brought in from Chicago. Um, you know, the idea was they had this guy who, you know, was, uh, you know, low risk, high reward kind of thing was in Chicago, had a decent, uh, you know, decent season, but wasn't retained. And clearly we know why now, because they're going scorched earth and decided that that's the best way to win. And it's, it's producing, but um, you know, he just he he really wasn't it as far as the number two center is concerned. And so, you know, I think Iserman made it clear that once the team is ready to take that next step, he would be willing to spend the money in free agency. And boy, did he ever. Yeah, it's easy to for, like because the season's already started rolling. It's it is easy to forget about everything that the Red Wings did in the off season. Uh, I mean, cop. I know. I mean, it's funny. Cop hasn't even scored a goal yet. Uh, and and hasn't looked particularly great yet, uh, but I I expect that he'll have more than two assists uh, every six games for this team. <laughs> but David Perron looks uh, he looks good. It looks like he's you know he's already fitting into that power play. He's got five points in six games so far. So uh, so far so good on that front. And really the biggest signing, Dominique Kubalik, more points than. Uh, almost everybody in the NHL. <laughs> yeah, I think he's tied for fifth or something like that. I mean, it's a ridiculous number. Not going to uh, last. Not going to last, but... No, no, no. <laughs> but good We're, good I mean, for him, you know, good on him for uh, for making good on, you know, what what seemed like a bad situation, like getting getting released and, like, not re-signed by Chicago seems strange, but really he has... Uh, he's, he's rolling now. He's with the team he should be with because... Uh, yeah, he's he's killing it. Yeah, and what's funny is he started the year on the on the fourth line, right? And uh, 
boy, quickly just put that to bed was like, you know what? Uh, fuck you guys. I want to be up in the top six. Right. So let right. me just show you what you're missing. And it's it's funny, too, because he, he really doesn't – I mean, his goal scoring has been literally getting set up on the one-timer, and he just rips it. I mean, and and who cares, right? If, if As long as you're scoring goals, who cares how you're doing it? But, um, yeah, man, I mean, four goals through six games is pretty good right now. And, um, you know, I mean, will he get back? I, I, I mean, I – I don't think this is going to, you know, be able to to keep up throughout the season. So if he can get back to that 40-ish point pace that he had when he first started in Chicago, I mean, at the 2.5 million mark that Detroit's paying him, it's going to be a freaking bargain. Yeah, yeah. And if he's anywhere close to what he's doing right now, then he's going to be uh, the steal of the, the offseason, to be honest. Right. With you. Uh, now, I, I'll say, you know, probably the – there, there's some things where you look and you go, okay, well, is a three one and two record for this team sustainable? Like, are they going to be in this position at the end? I, I don't, I don't know that they're going to get points in five out of every six games. Uh, but what I like is the fact that they're getting goaltending uh, when they where they should be. Like, they they don't have Thomas Grice anymore, and. Billy Huso has been as advertised. Now that doesn't mean that he's necessarily been, you know, I don't know, like crazy lights out. Uh, he has his fantastic stats. I mean, nine thirty nine save percentage. Uh, the games where where that he's won, I I don't necessarily know that he's been the the deciding factor. Like, he's been good. He's been very good. Uh, but I like that. They haven't had to rely so heavily on their goaltending. I mean, they they were in it with the Los Angeles Kings in a shootout, you know, 5-4 four, four game there. They, they've been able to score some goals, and that's something that you just weren't seeing from them last year uh, at this clip. And that's, I mean, their top line is completely different. Kubalik and, and Perron now joining Larkin, and uh Joe Valeno has really worked his way up into the lineup. You got Elmer Soderblom, who's just a freaking redwood out there. Uh, I I think he's the biggest forward ever, isn't he? Six eight. Uh, he uh-huh. might be up there. I know that line, that particular line with Sunquist, Rasmussen, and Soderberg is or Soderblom is basically the biggest line in NHL history. So. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I think they called the line the red, like the the redwoods. Because the you know, red wings, it. and then you get the giant. I like it. Uh, yeah. But yes, he. he uh, I. You know, I was like, oh, Soderblom's going to be uh, up in the third line. I'll pick him up in fantasy. And he, it was the the game he scored his first NHL goal, and I had just picked mm. him up. I dropped him because you know he's he's not he's not going to be a a money maker for me. But I needed someone uh, in in kind of a pinch. You know those moments where you kind of have those one or two players that you can just drop and it's no big deal. You can get someone else. And I needed yeah. someone with a game and was like, I need, I need to try and, and win here. So I, I scooped someone up for, uh, for that game and it was him and he scored me a goal. So it was nice. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's shooting the puck. I mean, he's got 12 shots through six games right now. So he's putting up a couple shots each game, which is nice for a third line guy. And if he can contribute, you know, 30 to 35 points, I think for, a rookie here. I mean, especially at his size, I think that's only going to be great. Um, now, you did mention a couple guys, just you know, in case you, the listeners aren't aware. Um, you know, Jacob Barana uh, has entered the NHL, you know, substance abuse program, um, or or I should say, you know, a player assistant program. So, um, you know, wishing him nothing but the best. And you know, uh, obviously, the first step is always admitting you have a problem. And so, if that's the case, you know, he can get the help he needs and. You know, back back with the wings here soon. Um, you know, Bertuzzi's been out, so yeah, that's definitely opened up some opportunities for guys like Kubalik to step and, and up. Joe and Joe Valeno moving up yeah. in the lineup too. Yes, yeah. So we'll see how that works. I know uh, tonight against Boston, Oscar Sunquist is going to be out, so that that Redwood line is going to be a little broken up. But um, you know, they do actually have a um, a younger guy by the name of Matt Luff who's going to be stepping in. He uh, he's played a few games in the NHL. You know, he was with the Mostly in the AHL last season, he's had seven points through five games in the AHL, so he's going to get a nice look and yeah, good see opportunity. If he can, yeah, contribute a little bit, but um, you know, for this Wings team, I mean, really up front with the four group, right? They've got a now a really good mix of you know some more experienced guys, but yet still have a, a lot of younger guys who are looking to prove themselves, looking to uh, to avoid. And I, I look particularly at Lucas Raymond and, and 
you know, on the back end, Maurice Sider to avoid that sophomore slump, right? Um, you know, Raymond two points so far through six games. So hopefully that doesn't continue. I know he spent pretty much all of last year with Dylan Larkin, and now he's he's been moved down to that second line with Andrew Kopp, and maybe that's you know to try to help get Kopp going a little bit more. I don't know. Well, but it's, yeah, Kopp's not getting going right now either. So there's uh, there's something going on there, but. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we need to put him back on the wing, and uh, you know, maybe move a guy like uh, you know Michael Rasmussen to the center position and see you know what happens there. But um, either way, I, I you know what I mean. This this four group is is going to be good. They're going to be fun and exciting to watch. And you know, even though I you know the Red Wings might not make the playoffs and might not be able to sustain this type of you know point production through you know every six games, I still think they're going to be competitive and fun to watch. Yeah, yeah, I I agree. Uh, you know, if you had told me that the Wings would be without Bertuzzi, Fabry, and Verana, and yet still be able to produce offense, <laughs> right. I uh, I might have said you're crazy. I mean, they have take 22 goals through six games. It's it's over uh over three goals a game, which is which right now uh, the league average I believe has been uh, 3.2 is is the league average goals per game so that is that is uh the highest it's been since 1993 uh the 92 93 season thus far is is what we're seeing so we're definitely seeing goal scoring uh not so much at a premium which tends to happen early on in the season but uh but definitely right now i mean it's funny even 22 goals in six games is about average <laughs> for the rest of the league, <laughs> uh, but they're letting it. They've only let in eighteen and six. So, uh, really, Nedeljkovic has been uh, the kind of the whipping boy. I'll say in the the three games that he played in, because you know he's got almost a four goal four goals against average, and that's just he happened to catch into the, into some of those more uh, higher scoring shootout type type of games. Yeah, he had that six goal game against New Jersey the other day. Right, right. Yeah, and, I mean, and see, I think those are the games uh, where you look and you go, okay, see, Detroit is they're they're gonna have those stinker nights, right? Like especially with these injuries, but they're gonna have those nights where they just this defense is is young, and the guys that aren't young are okay defensemen. Like Ben Sherratt is okay, but yeah, he's going number to three number four defenseman, right? I mean, that's, but he's going to like, when you look at the amount of events that happen when he's on the ice in the defensive zone, it's pretty high. Now he gets a lot of face offs in the defensive zone. So he's relied upon to, to take those draws and just naturally you're going to end up with <laughs> a lot of, a lot of shots on goal the other way. And that, that is what it is. Uh, but I, I do think that because this defense is very young, uh, yeah, he's starting, by the way, so far this season, 67% of the faceoffs that he's been out for have been in the defensive zone. So Ooh. naturally there's going to be a lot of activity when you're on the ice uh, trying to defend that way. But this defense is, where they're, where they're not young, they're they're average at best. Uh, so that's that's the area that, is probably going to hurt this team the most. Probably the reason why they, in my opinion, ultimately won't make the playoffs. Uh, they just don't. They've got Marit Sider, and yes, Fli- Philip Ronick will put up some points, but not great defensively. And the rest of them are just kind of the like average fringe kind of player, and and that just that, that's okay right now. Uh, but ultimately, is probably what is going to hold them back from being a playoff team. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we'll we'll see, right? I think you know, obviously, bringing in a guy like Sherrod has been good for for this Detroit team because now you don't have to worry about having to, uh, you know, double shift Maurice Sider because you don't want Heronic playing in the defensive zone, right? He is. Sure. I mean, he is what he is, right? He he's not very good defensively. He's he's got that offensive game to him, and so you yeah, know, put him out on there on the power play, and it's fine. Right. Yeah. I mean, he's still twenty four, so he can still develop that defensive side of his game. A little bit more at the NHL level, but for now, right, it's great because you don't have to worry about it as much when you have Sherratt and, and Oli Mata there for you. So, um, you know, I'm hoping and I, I suspect Maurice Sider will, will get his game together now that he's got a new defensive partner being so young. That's probably something that he needs to adjust to and a new coaching, uh, you know, team as well. So, 
you know, hopefully he gets back on and, you know, gets back up to his, you know, rookie pace as far as production is concerned. So I'm not worried about it, but, um, you know, I will say having a guy like Billy Huso in the net is, um, a nice little safety net as you're sure. kind of developing sure. as a defensive unit. Yeah, and N- N- Nadelkovich is has not been bad. He just happened to be involved in some stinkers of, of games too. Right. Uh, yeah, and I mean, if you look at it too, right? It, I mean, through five the last their first five games, they had only let in twelve goals. So that's just right. That's a pretty dang good margin as far as I'm concerned. So. Yep. yep yeah. Absolutely. Uh, you know, and the other the other thing to look forward to is, I mean, Simon Edvinson has put up four he's point per game four goal four points in four games for the grand rapids griffins and you got to think that at some point this year he's going to get called up uh especially if the injury bug keeps on on biting the, the wings i i think at this point they're pretty safe like they don't need to bring up edvinson right now and i'm sure that they've told him like we're just going to kind of let you we're going to let you really ripen down there right now we 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 uh we you know, improve your game. I'm sure they've given him several areas to work on and he'll get his opportunity. As soon as somebody goes down, especially on the, he's, he's a, uh, a left defenseman, left side defenseman. So, you know, as soon as somebody goes down, I would on the left side, especially, I would expect that he gets called up. Yeah. I mean, he's not playing third line minutes, right? You bring him up. If you can squeeze him in that top four and give him right. some big minutes. Exactly. Uh, so maybe if Mata Chirac go down, then yeah, you, you or, bring him up, but, or if this, if the defense looks bad and the rest sure. of the team looks really good through, let's say, 20 games and we're talking about, hey, this team's good. Like, we're looking at a team that could fight for the playoffs and Edvinson is still averaging a point per game in the AHL through 20-plus games. He's getting called up. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so here's the thing, too, that I was I was confused about that. Don't get me wrong. I think he needs to be playing responsible minutes and learn how to develop the defensive side of his game. But looking at how smooth of a skater, how good of a puck handler he is, I was kind of looking forward to seeing maybe Edvinson and Sider on the same line because you got to potentially think that this yeah. is the next ten to fifteen years of your you know your top pairing in Detroit. So get a yep. look now. Yep. But. but they're just. I mean, I get it. You're thinking we're not sure what we have with the rest of this team. You're still not sure. sure. You know, you you really gotta. You're just much better off going, you're going to play 20 to 25 minutes a night, no problem, and we're just going to let you go. And yeah, I, obviously the Red Wings trust what's happening in Grand Rapids. They they always have. There's, I, I don't think that they're going to let this guy, if he doesn't come up much this year at all, you got to think next year he's a lock to make the team. But I I get it. He also, you know, he, he's been playing through... Uh, Last year, you're playing in Fralunda. You're playing on different ice surface. It can take a little bit of time to get all those angles. And, and you know, maybe they just say, I think we trust the guys we have up here right now a little bit more because they've been playing on the bigger ice surface more often and have have the reps behind it. And that, that could be the case. And Whereas sure. they'll bring Edvinson up eventually and he'll... he'll uh, make his mark with the Red Wings. Yeah, that's for sure. We we know he's going to be good. It's just when when he comes up. Uh and it's definitely not a matter of the contract anymore, you know, because he's playing in the AHL, so his time is ticking as far as, you know, when he would have to sign his uh entry post entry level deal. Right. Uh any any other thoughts for the for the Red Wings before we do our ceiling and our floor for these teams? Oh. No, I, uh, uh, again, you know, I know expectations aren't as high as our next team we're going to talk about. So I'm just excited to hear where well, you think they could fall or where they could grow. Well, I, but do you have like, okay, I, I understand, you know, the Leafs were bad for a long time. So I totally understand the like, oh, I think we're actually getting good. <laughs> <laughs> and, and there's that like, well, don't, don't get too excited because then you'll be really sad. <laughs> you'll be really disappointed. And I'd say that that was the year that uh, that the Leafs went to the playoffs and, as a wild card and played Washington in that first round. That was that like, okay, don't get too excited. We may, I think we could make the playoffs, but I don't know. You know, it's, and then of course Matthews and Marner were amazing, and uh, and they they scoop into the wild card. I think in the last like two games of the, the regular season, they they snuck in. Um, what are your true, true expectations? Like, as a fan, what do you what do you think is going to happen for real? Like, 
Where's your head at? I mean, honestly, as a fan, right, first off, I, I look at other teams in this division, and I look at Buffalo and Ottawa, and I say, screw those guys. We better be better than them, right? Because you want – I mean, like, as a Detroit fan, right, those are the other two teams that everybody keeps talking about in this division taking that next leap, right? Um, so if, if you want to be better, if you want to, you know, progress, those are the guys you got to be better than. Because, you know, if they – if they hop you in the standings, if they're better than you, as you continue to grow, right, you're you're not going to, I mean, I hate to say it, but you're just not going to get as far as maybe you want to because you still have the Floridas, the Torontos, and Tampas yeah. of the world that are still going to be there for, for a few more years. And Toronto least, and, and Tampa right now sitting in uh, six right. and seven, that's not going to last. Right, exactly. Yeah, that's the thing. So, I, I mean, honestly, as, you know, someone who's a little bit more um, – you know, level-headed about expectations. I think just as long as we see continued growth, right? I want to see Lucas Raymond. I want to see Maurice Snyder take another step, right? Don't go backwards and have that. I know there's always those soft bar slumps, which is fine. I mean, look at Rasmus Dahlin. He had a he had a pretty bad one himself, and now look at it, he can't stop scoring goals. But um, so, yep. you know, I mean, again, realistically, I, I think as long as they they continue to battle, they're in the thick of it, and potentially knocking on that door this season I think that's just I want to you know they have to be better than they were last year that's that's without saying and so um you know again I just I want to see guys just get a little bit better and the only thing that really worries me about this team when I look at other teams in the division right I look at Tampa they have Stamkos Kucherov I look at Toronto they have Matthew Marner uh you look at Florida they've got Kachuk Barkov they've got that legit superstar forward and I think that's the one thing Detroit has been missing um you know, and that's that's what's keeping me a little hesitant about saying that this team's going to eventually get there to where they're going to be like the top team in this division, right? I think Larkin is still a quality center and somebody that I would love to have as my number one moving forward, but I still want like you know a, like a poster knocker, some legit threat sure, sure. who can take over a game, right? I don't think Detroit has it in the forward group yet, and and maybe you know Raymond might mold into that, maybe Larkin might you know improve a little bit more, but right now, as far as the forward group is concerned. I don't think they have that person yet. And it sure seemed like he was going to be that guy last year. You know, like, I mean, I I know it's early. It just, you you know, it's there. You know, there's something there for Lucas Raymond. He scored 23 goals in his rookie season. Uh, Granted, a minus 32. So (laughs) I I know that's not the of all and be all, but it does mean that he was given a little bit of a license to just go and score and don't worry about the rest. We'll figure out the rest as we go. And some of what we're seeing right now is the, is the figuring out the rest. You know, there mm-hmm. is a learning curve to actually being a really great scorer and not having more goals against when you're out there than what you score. You know, so what you scored 23 goals. Great. But you know what the, you're, you're a, a minus 32 differential five on five. That's it, it speaks more to the rest of the team. He was a rookie, but there, there is some expectation that, you know, he's going to have to kind of figure out the defensive side of the game as well. And that is probably like probably a little uh, of the reason why he's playing with Andrew cop too. It's like, you know, Andrew cop tends to be res- more responsible. Uh, so maybe it's that, that's the fit there too is not only trying to get cop going with Raymond, but also get Raymond going defensively with cop. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I will say too, I mean, listen for, for this four group anyways, they already have made, uh, in my opinion, and it's, it's, I'm sure it'll get topped at some point, but they've already set the play of the year expectations with Dylan Larkin's back check against LA to, to send that thing to overtime. I mean, that thing was just ridiculously fun to watch. Yeah, it was a good game. That was that was what game two of the year or three, mm, something like that? three, yeah, yeah, three. Yeah, I I mean, hey, they're they're looking good so far. It's and not only that, they've been very entertaining. They've been a lot of fun, and you know what? They've got six plus million dollars in cap space still. If they're in a position to maybe make the playoffs, not that I think that Iserman's going to go blow a first round pick for this draft, but do I think he'd be willing to, uh, to trade a third round pick, maybe St. Louis's second round pick. If it meant bringing in a legitimate defenseman that could make a difference and, and boost this team into the playoffs. I think we're there. Like you're not going to spend all your resources yet, but I think you're at the point where you're going to consider, 
you know, what you've got and, and, uh, and I mean, maybe look, rewarding you, this team with some better bodies. If you find a team maybe that is willing to, I mean, I, I hate to say this and put this out there in the world, but with, you know, a UFA next season, Tyler Bertuzzi, right? Maybe you find a team that thinks they can sign him, right? Or maybe wants him for a playoff run. So maybe you can get like a one for one, you know, defenseman for, you know, forward swap and maybe throw in that second round pick, right? Uh, yeah, you might be able to find a team like, for example, Arizona, right? Maybe they are willing to to take a chance. But I mean, again, guys who are going to be UFAs, it's it's a little bit more difficult uh, without knowing. Especially in Arizona, them, but, you know that they're. But you know, hey, Shane Goss the spirit of the Red Wings. Da 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 da. He's <laughs> fun be, as hell to watch. <laughs> he is. He is absolutely. I mean, but listen, with forty million bucks in cap space next year, I mean, and only like I said, Bertuzzi and, and Larkin who are going to need raises. Um, think, yeah, this, think about, think about this. So if, you know, maybe it would be, maybe not a first round pick in this draft, but Hey, what if you were, you know, you packaged a couple, a couple of your, your prospects and a first round pick and you go to Arizona and you say, shoot us chicken. Uh, I mean, suddenly Jacob Chikrin on this blue line and suddenly the Red Wings go from being a team that could make the playoffs to probably a playoff team. Uh, with him yeah. playing those kind of minutes, and then Edvinson coming, uh, you'd probably be in a pretty, pretty nice spot. Uh, especially since you know you could deal Marco Casper. Uh, you know Ooh. you you've got you've got someone there who you're not going to be able to just get Chikrin for nothing. Uh, but Marco Casper, man, uh, I I, I think that if I he was deal a big him now, but. Uh... You might, you might, well, maybe a Joe you know. Valeno, right? You could deal a Joe Valeno. Sure. He's a, sure. he's a guy I think would be, you know, a lot of teams would have interest in at 22, but, uh, but not yeah, the Coyotes. I, the guy is too old. The <laughs> Coyotes, <are, laughs> Coyotes are trading everybody who's, who's too old. Uh, yeah. I mean, so I, I will say though, you know, if you're willing to make a move for something like that, I think Eisenman's not going to make a big move like that unless they firmly are seated in a playoff uh, spot, right? It, yeah, it's going to need to be somebody who's somebody. It's going to be next year or the year after that when right. they, when he's willing to make a move like that. It's, yeah, this off season maybe, right? Say you can go out and you can sign a Ryan O'Reilly um, or you know bring him a uh, Tarasenko. Maybe you get lucky and snag one of those two pieces from. St. Louis, right? Because sure. Detroit seems to go after everybody from St. Louis right now. Um, <laughs> yeah, you just so, get David knows? Perron on the phone. Hey, man, yeah. <laughs> this is a great place to play. Yeah, absolutely. It's. I mean, I'm sure. I've you been don't to St. Louis. actually have to live in Detroit. Okay, you can live well, in West Bloomfield, and it's fine. Yeah, I will say, as someone who's been to St. Louis, I would prefer to stay in Detroit. To be quite honest, yes, one hundred percent. No offense to St. Louis, although everyone that plays in St. Louis talks about like the suburbs of St. Louis is super nice. The city oh, of St. Louis, community. not so much. It's the same as yeah, Detroit, though. the The suburbs of Detroit are super nice. Yeah, a lot, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, ceiling and floor. Uh, I'll tell you mine, and then you can you can tell me where where you actually end up. I know you just kind of you fandomed it, but we'll we'll no no no. Let's let's do it. Uh, so my ceiling for the Red Wings. I I guess I I can foresee a world in which they make the playoffs. Uh, a lot has to go right. And I think that that's more, that's not so much the ceiling. That's like the roof. I think that they're still a year away from making the playoffs. I think that right where they're at sitting in fifth, uh, I think that's probably their ceiling is that, that five spot. So just on the outside looking in and I, I would say that their floor is probably seventh uh, just behind Buffalo and Ottawa and ahead of Montreal is where I would I would likely have them. Especially if the like these injuries, you know, for a couple games you can kind of get by, but as they as time goes on and you're playing players in the wrong places in the lineup, that does catch up with you, especially as you start to play against maybe a, some more competitive teams that are sitting in the playoff they played a lot of non-playoff teams so far um or fringe playoff teams so the we're going to get a better look at this team really like the first month of their schedule is they're in a great position to win a lot of games and to to put themselves set themselves up here in the beginning uh and their schedule i think gets harder after this first month so i think it's just out of the playoffs and there is a chance if these injuries keep going that they they finish just above Montreal. Okay. Yeah, I think um, 
look, I I don't believe in uh, making the playoffs early on, but I do believe you can play yourself out of the playoffs very early. And so, sure. like, you know, for example, I think there's a team like, you know, Vancouver, for example, who's, you know, everybody's just like, bye oh, bye. it's early. Yeah, <laughs> it's early. But listen, I, I, I mean, I, I, you know, analytically think that you can, you know, price yourself out of the playoffs. So right now, sure. Money Puck has them at 13.1% chance of making the playoffs so Detroit right now sitting at 22.3 percent and so um, I think that's pretty good given you know given what their expectations really were and um, you know as far as the ceiling is concerned I think there is that you know one in four chance where I think they could make the playoffs right I I do think you know obviously Boston and Florida you could almost throw them in as locks at this point uh, you know had we talked a couple weeks ago I would have told you Toronto was going to be uh, winning this division uh, at the beginning of the season, but um, you know, maybe my opinions changed a little bit on that. And um, you know, Tampa Bay, I think they're starting to get together. They started the year off with Stamkos, Kucherov, and Braden Point on the same line, and it really wasn't clicking. Um, I think they tried a, a Boston approach, going all in with one, you know, massive line, and uh, you know, now moving Brandon Hagel around in that top six. I think it's they're starting to look and come together a little bit better now. Um, yeah, and Vasilevsky's so, just kind of finding his his game right. right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I, you know, while I think it's great that Detroit is, you know, sitting comfy in a playoff spot right now, I don't think it's going to last. I think if anything, right, they're going to need a bunch of things to go right for them. And when I mean right, I think uh, their ceiling is probably fifth in this division. I think ahead of teams like Buffalo, Ottawa, yeah. and Montreal, for example. And so they're going to need a division in the Metro to, you know, kind of go wrong, right? I think Carolina and New York will be there at the end. Pittsburgh looks like they will be at this point too. So, uh, you know, it's whether or not the New Jersey's Philly or Washington can make a push. And so um, they're going to need those teams to kind of falter a little bit as the season goes on and, uh, you know, have that opportunity to pull five teams from this division if they want to make the playoffs. Yeah. Um, And I, I mean, I don't know. I I don't know about you. I don't see, I don't see that Metro being in a place where uh, only three teams make it. There's just too many good teams in this division. And and that's that's not including the Flyers who are the the total outlier complete falsity of a team sitting there in the third in that division. They they are not this good. <laughs> yeah, they're, I mean they're, they're Carter Hart I think leads the league in goals above expected right now. <laughs> uh, that's a that's not going to last because Carter Hart isn't that good. He's fine, but he's not that good and. It's just he's just not going to make those saves all year long. Uh, they are from from my perspective. The Flyers have gotten lucky thus far. Uh, so yeah, uh, it's it's an interesting situation. I mean, right now, I think the uh, John Tortorella effect. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you could throw, but yeah, I agree with you. I think it's probably end up going to being a four and four situation. Um, so ultimately, as far as a floor is concerned, I think this team probably could, you know, maybe finish sixth seventh in this division right i mean buffalo and Ottawa are still on cruise control we don't know what's going to happen with josh norris for the rest of the year but uh, i think those two teams are going to be competitive does eric Comrie keep this up the entire season no i don't think so right his success and that is not going to be like this all year rasmus Dahlin's not going to be putting up a goal every game all season so i think a team like buffalo comes down to earth a little bit more um ottawa could sustain their success i think um you know they've they have the firepower up front to do it. Yeah, I would agree with that. But uh, depending on how long Talbot's out, right, that really could hinder them. So, um, you know, ultimately, I think you know Montreal and Buffalo probably are at the bottom of this division, and so Detroit maybe ultimately just finishes sixth in this division. Okay, well there we go. Yeah, that's a uh, so a safe prediction. Um, I think that's that's about where where I find them as well. Uh, okay, let's go stroll on over uh, across the bridge or the tunnel whichever one you prefer and uh, over to the city of uh, of the Leafs where the Leafs have started the season four and three uh, only 19 goals through the first seven games which is uh, below league average which is where not where we would expect uh, this high flying offense uh, that we got used to watching last year would be sitting it's not as if their power play hasn't been uh, been fine. You know, their power play is is still one of the tops in the league. That's still clicking. It's it's more been a a five on five issue, which is which is unusual. They haven't been in that position 
uh, in a minute. Yeah, the Leafs right now sitting at twenty two point two percent, which is which is fifteenth in the league. But that's that's only because well, Colorado's freaking fifty percent on the power play right now. Jesus, yeah, I know. Uh, but the, you know that's. That'll that'll. The Blackhawks are second in thirty three percent. Blackhawks, like, dude. That's why the they got to trade Patrick Kane. <laughs> you can't let this happen. Um, yeah. So thus far this season, the Leafs have looked. Uh, they, they've they've looked off. I'll say uh, the 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 perception. I remember w- watching a couple of these games, uh, particularly the game against Arizona, which I think is the one that most people will point to right now and go like. Well, first off, did you know that the Arizona Coyotes have gotten at least a point when they play the Toronto Maple Leafs in Toronto? Like, it's like they've gotten a point in every game they've played the Leafs since like 2002 or something like that. Yeah, it's been like the last 20. <laughs> That's insane. Games, I, think. Yeah. <laughs> I know that they've. I know that that probably equates to about 25 games, 20, 25 games. But that's still insane, especially given how how bad Arizona has been. Oh, but also it. it it makes more sense the the first ten years because the Leafs were bad, uh, but you know you look you watch that game and I watched the whole thing and you just looked at it and went this is so uninspired it's like nobody nobody gives a shit right now and you know towards the end they were like <laughs> oh crap we're gonna lose let's go and you know what it reminded me of it reminded me of those really good Red Wings teams those teams that like they could play. 50 minutes of hockey like they didn't even want to be there. And then they went, oh, there's 10 minutes left in the game. We're down two goals. All right, let's 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 just let's just make this happen real quick. And they would just go out there and, and, <laughs> and come back and, and win in regulation, right? Like that, those, some of those teams are so good, especially that 02 team. But but even into the, the 07, 08, 09, that team was Zetterberg and Datsuk. And they, they could just turn turn it on. But I, I'm specifically, I'm thinking of O2, uh, where you had guys like Brett Hall, who would, he could just float for 50 minutes and then go, I'm going to go out there and score. I'm sick of this. And he'd go out and score. Uh, that's kind of how I saw that game. And they, for all intents and purposes, did come back uh, uh, other than that silly uh, callback on that goal. Uh, but the... Uh, oh, that hand pass? Yeah, the hand pass, <laughs> which... I'll be honest, I didn't even realize you could go back and challenge something that happened before the goal went. I didn't the the hand pass. I didn't know that they could undo those. Um did you? Yeah, you know, I, I knew about the offside part, right? right? I mean you could go back and check for offside, but I didn't know about like other little penalties like that or like, you know, infractions, right? I didn't think that was a I had a never thing you yeah, could do. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know that you could oh, there's a hand pass back here in this play. Okay, well we're calling it back. It was like, oh, okay. I didn't even it didn't even register at first. Uh, but anyway, so they they lose that game. It was uninspired. And I would say that for the most part, other than the game against the Ottawa Senators, they have played very uninspired hockey. And it starts with Austin Matthews and and Mitch Marner. I think both have played pretty uninspired. Tavares actually looks pretty good. Uh, he's got more than a point per game right now. He's got eight points in the the seven games they've played. Nylander scoring goals, uh, but that top that top line of Matthews, Marner, and Bunting has just not looked the best right now. And I think you're, you know, maybe you'll see some some shifting to try and get those guys going because you got to get them going. I mean, Matthews and Marner both with one goal apiece through seven games. Your 60 goal scorers got one in se- one goal in seven games. He's traditionally been a slow starter other than his rookie year. So uh, I expect that he'll turn it around quickly. But uninspired, it's the best way I can put it. And I would think that as the season goes along, uh, we're going to get inspired. I sure hope so. I mean, I, look, I wouldn't mind seeing Tavares and Matthews on the same line here. And, well, I don't um, think you're going to put your two top centers on the same line. Well, I I don't think so. That's not the traditional way of doing it, right? But at this point, right, one goal for Matthews, I think I would try anything. Put him on the wing and see if Tavares can, you know, between him and, you know, Marner and Tavares, maybe somebody can float them the puck. He still, uh, he so he still can, has – Matthews still has – for almost five shots a game. It's not as if he's not shooting the puck. He's got a 3% shooting percentage. That is, I mean, if he was shooting at the percentage that he was shooting at last year, uh, which 
I had up and now it's gone. So his career shooting percentage is 16%. Um, if he was shooting at 15%, he would have six goals right now <laughs> and be top, like towards the top of the league. So it, it's not as if he's not shooting. I think we're just kind of seeing a, a little bit of bad luck uh, mixed with just it's, it's early. And I think there's so much pressure on this team. You can kind of see it. Like, you're like, why, why is there so much pressure in this Arizona coyotes game that like the GM is getting fired up? You know, Dubas is getting fired up. Keith's getting fired up after the game. It's unusual. I think for there to be this much pressure this early on, just, but at the same time, no one cares about the regular season, right? Like tons of pressure, but also if you win, nobody gives a shit because you have to win in the playoffs. It's an odd place yeah, to no. sit, and I I think they'll uh they they're gonna work this out. I mean, most of this is still the same team that they had last year, and uh, I I think you'll start to see this them them turn around. And the other side of it is they're getting great goaltending, and that was the biggest worry going into the year was crap. Do they have the goaltenders to do this? And Ilya Samsonov has looked great so far, a nine thirty two save percentage. Yeah, yeah, he's been a he's been a bright spot for sure. I mean, I I, I think he's still uh, young enough, and I still think he had enough potential when Toronto signed him, where he could potentially be a good one A one B guy, right? A guy I, I would feel comfortable throwing out 30, 40 games every year, no problem, right? If you're if you're rolling with a two goalie system, I I always figured he'd be great, right? You put him in the right system, um, just yep. didn't work out in in Washington, right? So um, Curtis you know, hey, Sanford, we're, coach of the year, Curtis Sanford. Yeah, I, we should well, start so, giving the coach of the year should be able to go to uh, or there should be maybe a separate award for the coach of the year for a a particular position like a goalie coach or video coach. Yeah, right? yes. yeah, something like somebody who, you know, a team says and this guy's gone above and beyond. I mean, he's been Matt. Matt Murray looked really good before he got hurt. Uh, and so I, I think your Curtis Sanford is uh, certainly having a big impact on the goaltenders around uh, the Leafs organization. And Sam Sonov is definitely the one who's, who's reaping the benefits so far because he's, he's looked very good, but also he hasn't done anything crazy. He's just in the right, the right place, the right time. He's, he's a positionally sound goaltender and he's not having to do a ton. Uh, it just, the, the Leafs hasn't, haven't been able to score in front of him like you would expect. Yeah, so so let me ask you this because I mean you mentioned coach, right? And I remember, um, gosh, I think it was a couple days ago there was a, a quote that came out with Barry Trotz. He had been interviewed lately, um, and he said he he's intrigued by coaching in a top six team or an original six team. And you know when you you look around, right? Detroit's got a new coach. Boston has a new coach. Uh, Montreal's got St. Louis locked up, right? So there's really like... I didn't see that he said this, so this is... Yes. <laughs> so really, the only viable option in terms of original six teams, because he's not going to go to Chicago no. and do a rebuild, no. right? I mean, that's just not happening. As much as, you know, as much credit as I got to give Luke Richardson, they're going to falter eventually. Um, but, I mean, Toronto is really the only landing spot as far as original six is concerned. And so if you're Kyle Dubas and you're trying to save your ass, especially because... The season hasn't necessarily started how you want it. It's not necessarily going bad like right Vancouver where they're hitting the panic button there already. But uh, unfortunately, they're already paying Travis Green and Bruce Boudreaux, so they're not going to pay a third coach. So they're just going to ride out this Boudreaux thing and see what happens. But I don't um, know. They might they might fire uh, fire Boudreaux. Well, that's what I want to ask you. You know, I mean, do you think but not Sheldon Keith 16. at some point? Right. Well, do you think Sheldon Keefe, you know, if Barry Trotz comes out and says, hey, you know what, I'm ready to get back in the game, and Toronto's still floating on a bubble spot, right? They're they're not necessarily in that top three or four position, right? They're still, you know, battling out with Ottawa or maybe Detroit for, you know, a fourth spot in this division. Do they pull the trigger, you know, especially with Dubas being this is a make-it-or-break-it year and, uh, you know, just say, hey, you know what, we're going to bring in a new guy and hopefully he can, you know, uh-huh correct the ship i'll tell you why i don't think that's the case uh dubas has proven over the course of his time as a general manager and and as an, an agm that he is a loyal like loyal to a fault sheldon keith is his guy he's gonna like 
if if Keith goes down, I think he's going down. Uh, the okay. way that I I kind of read this, uh, and I now I I mean there there are all sorts of doom and gloom situations. I don't think the Leafs are going to be in a position where you go, wow, they just missed the playoffs. Um, if they get fired, it's going to be because they don't win in the first round again. Uh, but I don't see Barry Trotz as a coach that would come mid season and be all that effective because he's so systems based to, to be able to take what he does and, and do it on the fly mid season. I don't know. It's, it's like, he's like the opposite of Bruce Boudreaux. Like Boudreaux could came into Vancouver last year and kind of just took the handcuffs off and went, yeah, just go and play. And mm-hmm. it works for a little while, and until it doesn't, like you're seeing right now, uh, mostly because Vancouver's defense is an absolute joke. Oh God, it's yes. been it's been brutal. Uh, no Quinn Hughes. What I mean, right. literally every. <laughs> right. It's terrible. Uh, so, I I think when it comes to firing Keith mid season, not that I couldn't see it, I it could happen, but only if the Leafs also go. You know what, Dubis, we're done. We're moving on. And and Shanahan does what he needs to do to save his job, perhaps. Uh, sure, it's tough to see a, a scenario where that happens mid season. Uh, I'm not sure. And would Barry Trotz? I mean, hey, he's he did it for Ovechkin, right? Like, I think everyone compares Ovechkin to Matthews to a certain extent, just because of the the goal ten, goal scoring prowess. But I think they're very different players, and I I think that. When when push comes to shove, his system is just too complicated to implement mid season. Right. And also defense really isn't the issue for the Leafs. <laughs> it's it's been putting pucks into the net. So, you know, I, I, I think they'll figure this out internally and it's only seven games. They're if they win their next game, they're in second place in this division. <laughs> like they're they're in no no trouble right now. It's it's uh just it just want if if right now mid season if if we were in January and they were four and three in their last seven games, you'd go okay, <laughs> like it wouldn't wouldn't be a, a thing. So uh, I, now Matthews and Marner not scoring yet. It's it's you're not on red alert yet, but you you the the yellow light might be up right now. You know you're going hmm, this can't happen for another seven games. That's for sure. Uh, before, we get, before we get concerned, but as long as they're scooting along and they're, you know, right, right in the thick of things, I, I think it's, it's okay. And you really haven't seen them other than again, that game against Ottawa really early on. I don't think you've really seen a game where they, they came to play. And I think you're going to get that, that team coming out. I mean, they're, they're playing the sharks tonight. By the time people listen to this, I'm, if they've lost to the Sharks, then, uh, you know, let's go to DEFCON 4. <laughs> uh, no, I, I think you're you're looking at this road trip. You know, you did the you did the, the Winnipeg, Vegas, San Jose, L.A., Anaheim. Uh, you're hoping at the end of that road trip, and, and Dallas, uh, which they won in Dallas. So you're, you're hoping at the end of a six-game road trip that you've probably gone three and three, at the end of it, and right now they're one and two. So, you know, you, you got to think the Sharks, that's that's a win, and then probably Anaheim's a win, and you, you come back home, and then you're able to, to really get going, and then you're going to start playing some good teams. Then you've got Boston, you've got Carolina, you have Vegas again, you've got Pittsburgh. Uh, those are four four games in a row that are going to be a huge test Let's talk on November the 12th when those four games are done and see how the Leafs fared in those games. And, and I think that will really give us a picture of, of where we're at here with this team. Uh, by the way, the Leafs play the Pittsburgh Penguins three times in a 15-day span. <laughs> yeah, that month of November, man, they got to play them three times. That's crazy. Yeah, Whew. three times, and you're playing the uh, the Minnesota Wild in there, but... And you're gonna have to face Sorokin. Yeah. Good, good times. Uh, New Jersey yeah. twice. They're not a slouch right now. November twenty eighth, Leafs Wings. Mark that on your calendar. Uh huh. All right. All right. So give me give me the ceiling and the floor for uh, for the Leafs. 
Yeah, um, as far as the ceiling is concerned, I'm probably going to put conference final on this one. Um, I don't quite think they're yet at that level of Stanley Cup contender. Um, as far as like you know, a team I could potentially see going all the way just because. Oh yeah, you can't see them going um, there because you know. they've never won around. <laughs> it's impossible. Well, like, well, it's yeah, a- absolutely. That's. But I mean, look on paper, I think they have enough. If they could figure it out offensively, right? I think they have enough firepower to go deep in a playoff run, right? But what what concerns me is uh, Sam Sonoff, right? Is he going to keep up? You know, because this has got signs of. Jack Campbell written all over it when you're having early season success, right? Sure, but sure. that deep, you know, the defense worries me a little bit, right? Muzzin has a problem staying healthy. Uh, you've got Lilligren. I don't know what his, you know, injury situation yeah, is. Yeah, we didn't even talk Muzzin that Marner came out and was like, yeah, you know, it's just a, yeah, it's a matter of also him like wanting to be able to be healthy in his life. Right. And when you hear of someone who seemingly is like a friend, a teammate, say something like that, you're like, oh, shoot. Like That's got retired written all over. Is he going to play again? I know from right. what I hear he is, and he's he's on, he's on you know, he's going to be back. Uh, but you got to wonder, like, this might not be, you know, maybe this is his last hurrah here. I mean, he might he might be done after this year if, if this keeps being a problem. So that's, it's almost, it's, yeah, that's, that's the biggest question mark for the Leafs is there is there defense we didn't even really hit on it uh but does you know Jake Jake Muzzin I mean if all of a sudden you have 5.6 million bucks available to you because Muzzin is gone I I think they're bringing someone in you got to think that they will oh, they'll, they'll spend to get them but yeah you've got first round picks you can you can waste and you you have to think right again because I think they could potentially go to a conference final with or without a good defense I think they have that much good firepower up front if they can get just some half decent goaltending in the playoffs, right? I think they have that potential. So, um, you know, outside of you know Morgan Riley, this this defense to me is a big question mark, right? And so that's the one thing that I that's keeping me from putting them in that Stanley Cup contender realm. Um, and same with this goaltending, right? I just I don't trust that enough. Yes, Matt Murray's won a couple cups, but um, you know his recent seasons don't lead me to believe that he's in that form or he's going to get back to it. So, um, you know, maybe he rediscovers that. Maybe, you know, like we talked about, they bring in a new coach. Who knows, right? There's a whole bunch of different factors, and it's always the same with any team that could play out. And so, um, you know, assuming everybody's healthy, you get Muzzin, you get Lilligren back, I think this team could make a run at the conference final. Um, You know, I just think, you know, eventually they're going to run into a team like, you know, uh, I mean, I personally am thinking of this right now. Maybe the Leafs. Uh, you know, finishing that that third spot, and Boston finishes out the conference or in, at number one, and maybe we see them at the end of the, uh, you know, at the end of the, I don't know, some. Well, that I would, would love to see a scenario. Round. Yeah, that would you, be the second yeah, round. Yeah. yeah, but maybe they hit a wild card and they get, in, you know, they have to play in the Atlantic and so or the Metro, and so maybe we get some weird scenario where the conference <laughs> final ends up being Toronto, Boston, and I just would love that. But that would be um, fun. <laughs> yeah, um, but ultimately. You know, that's where I see them as far as the ceiling is concerned. But as far as the floor, um, I just think it's another first-round exit, right? I, I think ultimately they're going to find a way to, to right the ship, you know, as far as the goal scoring is concerned. And they'll make a push. They'll get in the playoffs. I don't I don't have any doubt about that in my mind. And, uh, you know, whether or not this defense and goaltending can get them past the first round is another question mark. Yep, it's, it's tough. Like, it would be a full-on fandom cloud – to not say that their floor is losing in the first round. Like right. I just we've seen it time and time and time and time and time and time again. And uh, like that could very well happen. Uh, I especially now, you know, if if they're not gonna be if they're not gonna finish first in the division, then you're definitely you're like, well, you're gonna play Tampa or you're gonna play Florida or Boston in the first round. So unless you can win this division, which maybe out of any division in the league, this is the division to not be in the two or three spot. Like <laughs> you don't want to play the other teams in there. So yeah, the floor is definitely the losing the first round. I'll say the ceiling is Stanley Cup final. They they could beat any team in this conference in the playoffs, uh, based based on the numbers, but. Do I see them spinning around and beating Colorado? Or, you know, 
It's it's gonna be t- it, it would be tough. I it's it, the 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 fi- maybe the final four is kind of where I I'll put it because they could like they they have as good of a chance to win the Stanley Cup I think as any team. Uh, but I do think that there are a couple teams that need to be less lucky than they would. Like no doubt about it. Like last year was probably one of the the first years where you went, "Oh, Colorado wasn't even lucky. They just were going to win it." <laughs> but uh I'd say you'd you'd probably feel that same way about Tampa Bay uh their first cup win. I would say that they they were not lucky. I think the second time around they were more lucky that they got there. Uh they they had some fortunate bounces go their way. Uh some game 7s and that that just is what it is. I mean, anytime you're in a game seven and it's a one goal game, you got pretty darn close to losing, and you could have lost just as easily as you won. Uh, by the way, I'm just looking. This is totally an aside. The the Pitt, St. Louis Blues have only scored twelve goals in five games, and have only yeah. allowed twelve goals in five games. Man, they're defensively and offensively they're uh, they're in in an interesting place. They haven't let a single power play goal in yet either. So they're just, I mean, defensively, they're, Crushing. they're it's on lock. Yeah. On lock. Well, yeah, anyway. So the the Leafs, I, I think they'll, they'll write this this early season weirdness. Uh, we'll, we'll forget all about it. But uh, it's all about those playoffs. And that's the, that's the tough thing is that, yeah, these 82 games, they're probably going to be, uh, it's it's very likely that they're top three team in the division, and we'll see how the rest of it kind of sh- shakes out. But you know, it'll be fun now to see because Matthews only has one goal through seven games. It'll be fun to see ultimately how many goals he ends up with. Now, I'm going to ask you, knowing where he's at, you know, 75 games left, and he's got one goal so far, over under 51 goals. Ooh. You know, I I'm going to put the under. I think he ends up probably closer to 45 um, at the end of the year. Yeah, I okay. I just the more and more I think about it, I just I feel like that's probably where he's just going to fall. Um, now, again, I I don't think it's you know again it's completely possible he hits 50. Not a problem. Yeah, when he scores four um, goals tonight against the Sharks, you're going to text right. me back and go, never mind, he's going to get 60. <laughs> right. Yeah, and that absolutely could happen, right? But you know, let me ask you this question too, because I was just taking a peek at some free agents. I'm just thinking, okay, you know what? There could be a right-handed defenseman, maybe. You know, maybe you look at Michael Stone or something, because I do think that right side is a little weak on defense. Well, I'm you've thinking, got Lil- who could they bring? Lilligren is, well, sure. is your. Uh, I mean, he's he's going to come up and and uh, and that's going to solve their right side problem. Yeah, you hope so, right? But so, but here's the other scenario. I I, I saw a name out there, and I'm like. You know what? I've never even thought about this being a possibility um, for this team, but I don't know if it's crossed your mind at all because I look at a guy like you know Nick Roberts and Michael Bunting. I think they're better suited in that middle six area, and so maybe a potential guy you could move Mitch to the left side. What about bringing in a guy like Patty Kane to play on that top line with those guys? Oh, sure, yeah. I mean, I mean, let's do it <laughs> all day. You, well, realistically, I've thought about it, of course. Do you think that you know? Do you really think realistically that they're going to go out and spend that kind of capital to bring in a guy like that if they're in the hunt for a playoff spot? Right? Because, I mean, when I think about it, a guy like, you know, Kyle Dubas, maybe to try to save his, you know, his job, right, is just getting past that first round. So you go all in, you spend a first round pick, you spend, uh, you know, a prospect, and maybe you throw in, you know, a roster guy like, gosh, I don't even know, maybe. You probably um, almost certainly have to throw in someone who makes some money. Yeah, like a Kerfoot, right? You have to throw Kerfoot in there, right, to to send some money back, um, or maybe even a, a TJ Brody. I don't really know. Or, but. or you're trading Kerfoot separately. You know, as as Kerfoot's a UFA at the end of the year, you could you know you could you could work that uh, right to fit his his money in there because you need two point five million dollars. You know, to be, yeah, to be able to go fifty yeah. percent and then fifty percent again with including another team, you'd need two point five million bucks. I I think you could. You could probably, you could probably find a way, especially with all their, the 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 plus of having some injuries right now is that you start to bank that trade deadline cap bonus, right? right? So uh, that's that's the benefit, and it's it's going to help them. Will they? Would Patrick Kane be willing to go to Toronto to play with Matthews? I'll bet you he would. 
<laughs> I'll bet you yeah, he why would. Wouldn't you, right? it, the, it would be the the greatest American duo of all time to play oh on gosh. the same team. That like find me a better two American players that have ever played together on the same line if that were to happen. Uh I'm I'm trying to think who who that would that's be. That's got Kachuk Ronick written all over Kachuk, it. Right? I mean, yeah, Kachuk Ronick. That that would be and Arizona. and let's be honest, Matthews is already better than both those players. <laughs> right. And, I think Patty Kane's better than both those And Patty Kane's still. better than both of them. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so that there it would be the best. Now, granted, those two guys at least played together for a good chunk of time, a couple of years, I think. Yeah, yeah. But anyways, yeah. So uh, that I've absolutely thought about that. That's man. That that's the dream scenario, right? Like the okay. Patrick Kane is the ultimate trade deadline acquisition. He's going to change the fortune of whatever team he goes to. Does it guarantee a cup? No, but it. It is going to be, boy, what a what a boost to whatever team acquires him. <laughs> that yeah, is going to be. Yeah, that's saying if you don't get out of the first round with Patty Kane as Toronto, then I would you fire know, fire the you whole gang. House. Fire the yeah. whole gang. Yep, <laughs> bring in Barry Trotz. <laughs> He's gonna change the whole system. Yep, trade William Nylander. That's you know, that's probably what's gonna hap- end up happening. So right to bring in a, a number but, two defenseman. Sure, yeah, they're gonna win some rounds. This is this is the the perfect start to a season. Nobody cares. Nobody's destroying themselves for this, and uh, and then it, when it all comes comes down to it, they'll go out, they'll win the round, and and we'll we'll all go. Oh, see, the start meant nothing. Uh, didn't matter. Playoff times what matters. So. <laughs> At least that's my hope. Um, and uh, yeah. it, hope is free. That's what I love about it. Um. All right. Well, that's the end of our. Uh, our Atlantic Division preview. That's the end of our preview. Preview of the whole. What What are we gonna do? <laughs> what are we gonna talk about? Are we gonna talk about the season, right? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Uh, I think we'll find something else to do. Probably some top okay. some top tens about some like old class like top ten players from the nineteen thirties. Since Ooh, you know we're something like that. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. We're gonna talk. Yeah. We're gonna talk season. <laughs> <laughs> like we're just like oh well don't worry about what's happening this season we'll do well we're about to be doing our uh our quarter of the way through the the season awards in like three weeks so yeah we're almost there yeah yeah no we'll we'll uh we'll find our way to talking about things actually happening on the ice as as it uh as it comes and uh i hope you enjoyed all the previews that we that we did and uh you know let us let us know how we did on your team and uh until the next time, enjoy the enjoy the games and uh, any Justin any, as as we leave here, anything that you like, any games you're watching, any like particular teams so far that you're like, yep, I'm definitely watching that team. Boy, I mean, obviously, right, Detroit, Toronto. I well, I guess outside of your team, of yeah. course, yeah. Uh, to be quite honest, I've been really intrigued watching Dallas right now. Um, they've been Dallas fun. Is, yeah, they've just been fun to watch. Um, you know, I mean, again, I, I, I had expectations that they would be a playoff team, but, uh, man, I didn't think they would be this good to start the year. And, you know, Joe Pavelski was one guy in particular that I had my eye on because listen, I mean, he's in a contract year and not, well, not only that, but like just because he's of his age alone, right? He's, year. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, just because of his age, I mean, I just, I'm waiting for him to slow down. He's just one of those guys. Um, you know, and aren't so, you in HR? You know, Shouldn't you know yeah, that you right. can't talk about people's ages? <laughs> Yeah, and then, you know, also besides them, I mean, i just been kind of keeping an eye on Vegas because I just have uh, internally, right, maybe not realistically, but internally I have high expectations for Vegas. I expect them to be, uh, you know, a Stanley Cup contender this year just because I love Mark Stone. I love Jack Eichel, so I want those it guys was to so be successful. Fun. Yeah, it was so fun watching, you know, Kessel. He get he gets his, uh, his Iron Man streak, which is – Probably the four hundredth goal, yeah. and then scores his four hundredth goal. Scored his thought he scored his four hundredth goal against Toronto the game before, right. and it gets called back on the offside. But man, he, I, I kudos to Phil Kessel. We'll end, we'll end. Uh, kudos to Phil Kessel. I did, man. I should go back to our uh, our preview on the the Vegas Golden Knights. So far, I think he's got he's got three points in eight games, um, and he's got that one goal. I, I think he's going to be he's he's going to put up better numbers here, um, but I love like I there's a different feel about Phil Kessel right now. Even though his numbers aren't 
off the charts. He's you know he's on pace for about a forty point season. Uh, I I think he's going to pick this up here as we go and put it put in some more goals. Uh, but he seems rejuvenated. And it's been fun to watch him early on in the season, and he just looks like he's having a good time out there. Finally, finally, he he's back winning, and and he looks like he's having fun. And uh, I'm 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 happy for him. You know, the the hot dog guy gets his Iron Man streak. Ah, there it is. There it is. And Logan Thompson is a uh, is so far. I mean, he's is he uh, on They're your Vesna the list? Goals against. Is he on your Vesna list? Uh, not yet. No, no. I, I need some sustained success. <laughs> yes. I yes. will tell you right now, my uh, my Vesna front runner has got to be between. Um, gosh, I, I'm going to have to put Sorokin and. Uh, oh my gosh, I have uh, a story in there. Huge Sorokin. I was so mad in one, <laughs> in one of my leagues. I have Sorokin and I have Jack Campbell, and Sorokin was playing the New York Rangers, and I was like, oh, yep. I'm not sure. I was like, I'm going to put Jack Campbell in because they're playing the Blues, and the Blues can't score. Right, so uh, I was like, even if he doesn't win, he's probably only going to let in a goal or two. Uh, and so I, I put Jack Campbell in, and I was like, I'll think about it, and then I'll I'll check on things later. And I forgot to go back and check. Jack Campbell didn't play. Sorokin pitches a forty-one sh- save shutout, <laughs> <laughs> and in that league, the points are crazy. So I think he had okay. like one hundred and forty points. I don't know how it all. Oh my god! Banks out, but he had a ton of points. Um, but fortunately, I'm still winning. But I was like, "You got to be kidding me! I'm an idiot. Why did I? Ever, why did I ever? I'm not. Gonna, I'm never gonna, never gonna do that again." Um, Good call. But, anyways, all right. Well, uh, to our listeners, enjoy whatever game it is that you're gonna watch today. Uh, find us on Twitter at ot hockey talk. And Justin, have a good night. You too, sir. Thank you.